I am delighted to have Chong Zhang from IR Labs join us. I have incredible respect for IR Labs. I think they have uh, probably one of the best chiplet-based photonic solutions in the industry. And uh, to have him talk about how it works and comes together in his package, I think is really great. Uh, Chung is a semiconductor packaging expert with more than 12 years experience. He holds a PhD degree in mechanical engineering from University of Central Florida. He serves as a senior engineering manager at IR Labs and has been a lead of the packaging team developing there as well. Prior to IR Labs, Chung worked at Intel ATTD for eight years and focused on substrate pathfinding. He's authored more than 10 papers and holds more than tw uh, holds 20 US patents. patents. Chung? Yeah, thanks Dave for the introduction. Uh, yeah, it is my honor to present uh, in this forum today. And uh, good morning, everyone. Today I'm going to present the uh, City Photonics Chiplet packaging. Uh, focusing on the optical assembly challenges and uh, how we push the, the whole optical assembly industry moving forward. So this is the uh, agenda for my talk. So I will first introduce the IR Labs optical IO solutions and uh, followed by the, the definition of a first and the second level optical interface in an optical module. Um, it's important to separate these two interfaces since the requirement and challenge will be different for them. Uh, which we, I will talk more. Uh, at the end, I will talk about the requirement and challenges for the optical adhesive uh, or epoxy and the optical assembly equipment, followed by the final summary. So now uh, let's look at uh, why we do we need the in-package optical I.O. So, so these two pictures on the slides can show a good explanation on um, what are the problems that in the package uh, optical I.O. can resolve. Uh, for the figure on the left, it shows a typical package for CPU. Uh, currently, all the I.O., uh, actually electrical I.O., need to go through the LGA or BGA path at the bottom of the IC package. So due to the, uh, the pitch and the pin count limit, the I.O. bandwidth scaling through the package become very challenging to be to scaling in the future. Um, so this is the first limitation and the picker, uh, the figure on the right hand side shows a bigger problem. So here the, the horizontal axis is the time uh, in terms of years and the vertical axis is the power consumption and com uh, computing IC package will, will consume. So the blue dot is represented the total power consume, consumed by the whole package and the purple uh, dot represented the power required just to get the I.O. off the chip. So uh, in reality, you, you need the, the data to feed into the computing logic on the chip and transfer the data back outside. So a more power, uh, usually a more power chip requires higher data, data I.O. bandwidth. So from the figure, you can see that the energy required for the I.O. has a steeper load. Uh, slope line than, than the total power a package ha can handle. So if uh, we follow this trend, so uh, in, in, the, in the near future, all the power allocated for, for a chip will consume by the, by the IO, uh, by, by the IO itself. So, so this is definitely the problem. So this overall phenomenon, we call it a power wall that the high performance computing industry is facing today. So, so this means we definitely need a more uh, efficient, energy efficient IO technology. And uh, at this time, going to optical become inevitable. So by adopting optical IO, we can have more power allocated on the chip to do computing. So not just transfer data in and out. So this is how we, we break the power wall and also continue to scale the, the computing performance. Uh, this page shows where the optical I.O. fit in the overall picture. So the figure on the left is uh, from Gordon Killer uh, from DARPA. So again, a uh, uh, horizontal axis is the maximum distance a particular uh, interconnect can support. The vertical axis is the figure of merit defined by the bandwidth density 
divided by the energy consumption. So actually the higher on the vertical axis is, is the better. And we also try to transfer data over long distance. Uh, so, so here uh, we, we separate into three domains. One, the, the dashed blue line in the figure is the performance of electrical IO. So thanks for the advanced packaging, uh, for the electrical packaging. It can support very high bandwidth with a good energy efficiency. But the problem is that it can only support a very short distance. So if you can see that it can go from uh, uh, like ten, tens of microns to a few millimeters. And uh, as the distance go longer from a few meter to a meter, you can see the bandwidth and the energy efficiency goes down very fast. And for, for a, a even longer distance, down, larger than a few meters. So it doesn't make sense for the, for the signal to transfer electronically. So here comes the, the purple dash line, which represents the, the traditional optical, uh, optical IO for ethernet and switch applications. So it can go long distance, but uh, cannot support the super high band bandwidth with a good energy efficiency. Uh, and also latency for the traditional optical IO is a problem. So because uh, the reason is that it still requires a long distance for the electrical signal to transfer from uh, CPU to the Ethernet card, which usually is uh, in the term of 100 uh, millimeters. So in package uh, optical IO, which is a star that we show in the figure, the blue star, is a, we think it's a solution to bridge the gap. So, so here I use the terrified chip from uh, IR Labs as, as an example. So the terrified chip, will sit in the same package of computing SOC, such as a CPU, GPU, FPGA. So it can receive the high bandwidth electrical uh, signals over a very short, short distance within the package. And the converted to optic signal that launches to the, to the fibers, that, so, so which can travel over a very, very long distance. So the, the blue arrow in the figure, so the terrified chiplet can support high bandwidth, and also the high energy efficiency data transfer over hundreds of meters, even up to a few, few kilometers. So this resolved the critical bottleneck that the computing fabric IO is facing now. So with this, uh, in package optical IO, uh, innovation in the computing architecture can be achieved. So historically, if you see the figure that uh, the computer power can be increased by integrating more transistors on in a chip or assemble multiple chips in package. So in the future, uh, like uh, you, when we enable in package optical IO, multi chips or multi package can be integrated together. So the whole rack, if you see the, the, the figure for the 2026, the whole rack can perform as a super computing, computing chips rack. So this should be the way that how we continue the Moore's law in the future with optics. And also in, in package optical IO, there's another ar architecture I didn't show here, is that it can enable the co computing architecture called disaggregated computing. So where can, you can divide and consolidate the computing memory and the storage in different right. So this can make the whole data center more, more efficient in the future. Um, so here is, uh, I, I show the core technology for the IR Labs. There are two production lines that IR Labs. One is called Terrify, which I talked before. This is the silicon photonics chip that can be placed in the same package as the CPU, uh, GPU, IPG. This is shown in the figure. So it can convert the electrical IO signal from the computing chip to optical signal and launch it to the optical fiber. And the optical signal can be received at the other side uh, over a long distance by another terrify, if you see the on the red, red hand side the package, and convert it to electrical signal and fit into the, the computer chip in the same, same package. So the terrify chip is, uh, is bi -direct directional. It can both transmit and receive data. Um, and the supernova on the bottom is the remote multi wavelength source, laser source that providing the, the continuous uh, wave light, light supply to the terrify chip. So, so here at IRLab, we propose a remote laser architecture because of the challenge in the laser thermal management and also laser reliability. Uh, supernova, the laser module is uh, field replaceable. So if the laser is going bad, we can easily replace it with a new one. 
So this figure just picture just show you that uh, what is actual uh, IRF solution looks like. So on the on the bottom, you can see uh, the green uh, package with the ISOC in the center and with the four terabytes like sitting in the same package, very close to the to the IP, to, to the to the ISOC. And uh, this terabyte can talk with another uh, the the MCP green package, and the laser source the supernova is feeding the light into the package into the, the terrified package. Uh, so now let's look at um, what is inside the chip that uh, to make it uh, special, uh, make our labs solution more special. So from uh, at our labs, we are adopting the micro ring resonator. So this is a ring resonator is uh, usually a few microns. So this is much smaller than the, than the device such as uh, Mark Zander devices for the uh, in the traditional Ethernet transceivers. And also IR Labs, we, we integrate uh, everything, all the electronics like TIA drivers, uh, equalizers, uh, equalizations, controls, and the photonics on a single uh, CMOS chip. So, so it's a, we call it monolithic integration. So everything is in, within the chip. The efficiency, the energy consumption can be much better in this case. And this picture shows the, the IO chiplet. The actual algo chip chiplet. Um, so this is a. Uh, it can support the uh, energy uh, uh, efficiency can be five pico, less than five picojoules per bit, and uh, with a nanosecond latency. So on the right, this is how the package, how the uh, terrify is in integrating the the, the multi chip package. So this is what we showed in the OFC this year. So this ISO C in the package and with the four terrify chip on the side. Um, so this can direct uh, uh, the translated optical uh, electric signal to the optical si signals from the SIG package. And this page shows that uh, um, uh, one example of uh, the terrified uh, chip architectures. So you can see on the left side is the, the parallel interface. We use this as example. So currently our, we are supporting the AIB um, advanced uh, interface bus uh, parallel in, parallel in the, uh, electrical interface, and we also have other chip can support the the other uh, parallel and the serialized interface. For example, UCIE is also we, we are we are trying to planning this chip uh, in the future, and uh, we have the <coughs> crossover, so it can transfer this um, the 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 digital signals from the parallel interface to to the we call the micros. This is a uh, we have uh, eight uh, full duplex optical ports. So each part of it, we have a TX uh, tra transmittance and the RX means uh, receivers. Um, we have eight uh, totally uh, optical ports and each part we can support eight wavelengths. We call it slice, WDM slice for per optical ports. So this together, we can um, support totally 256 gigabytes per port and that's equivalent to terabytes per chiplet. And, uh, and we use NRG, so it doesn't require the forward error correction. Uh, so also we have a roadmap to, so every two years, the plan is every two years, we double the, the bandwidth the chip can support. So we have a roadmap uh, to support uh, more than 32 uh, terabytes per, per second for the for ter terabyte chiplet. And energy efficiency is uh, less than five picojoules uh, per bit. And the latency is in the nanosecond range, and the distance can travel up to two kilometers. Chung, an interesting question came in on the chat on the pico joule, five pico joules per bit. Obviously, that's very good. How does that compare to electrical efficiency, and maybe how does it compare against ideal energy efficiency? Any thoughts on that? So, uh, I mean, electrical signal, I mean, if you are talking about a very, very short in the package, I think that is quite, quite the equivalent. But uh, if uh, we are talking about uh, PCIe express for long distance, that will be with, without uh, those studies, it will be very, the, 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 the energy will be very high. So this could be beat the, the I mean, the overall long distance, it can, it can be better than the electrical uh, energy uh, uh, efficiency. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, so this one shows the roadmap, um, how we um, uh, progress the technology for IR labs. 
So, so we can um, either increase the, the micros, the channels that uh, we can uh, transfer the signals, or we can uh, increase the wavelengths for, for, for each micro they can, we, can, we can use, we can support. And also we can uh, increase the data rate that for each micro ring, moderator can handle. So, so we have three knobs that can easily give us uh, to uh, 32 terabits in, in the future. Uh, and um, so, so here I, I finished the introduction of, of our chiplet. So here I, I will talk more about our packaging and assembly. Uh, so we have a test vehicle. Actually, at ILS, we have our own test vehicle to, to uh, do the enable the assembly process flow uh, for the multi-pick chip packaging. So we have uh, our supply chain for the core repeater, deep chip, and the, the, and the fiber touch. So, so we have a we. I mean, we are we are using Global Foundry's um, Autonix uh, uh, platform for for the uh, for our uh, CMOS chip for wafers, and uh, so so we are using the, the test vehicle to enable the fiber touch, as I mentioned. Also, we also uh, enable the silicon interposer and the cover pillar technologies, and we use this to um, verify the the assembly yield. And the readability, um, and also demonstrate the supply chain uh, for for the whole process. Um, so this page shows you the process flow for a multi chip package with the optical I/O chiplet. So this is the the with the silicon interposer, like for the two point five D uh, uh, packaging. So on the left hand side, this is the interposer. So we get in from our fab, and then we do the UVM review and the UVM. And do the depth prep and then flip shift that on the subject. So this is the I mean below the 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 gold color that is in the poser, and we have subject and underneath. And we also have uh, in 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 parallel we have our sitting photonic wafer uh, from our fab, and then we do the the copper pillar. Uh, we do wafer sort depth prep followed by the flip chip our um, of our terrified chip on this in the poser. So then we will finish the the calf the underfill. Uh, put the lid and then do the fiber touch, then followed by the, the final test. So this is the picture shows that the actual uh, do that package uh, that uh, we already demonstrated with the 2.5D uh, silicon interposer technology. Uh, so now let's switch here to towards more uh, about the optical assembly. Um, so this page shows more details about the optical assembly for the silicon chiplet. So the so the purpose uh, I I put the purpose for the photonics uh, packaging that is provided in the optical connection between the chips photonic chips and the industry standard optical interface. So now for the other uh, optical communication, this is a bit is all fiber optics based. That means transfer um gap, gap bridge the the chip to to the fiber. So uh, uh, I I try to separate that uh, between the photonics packaging and uh, optical assembly. Are the electrical packaging. So these two, I mean, you can see the top and bottom is kind of an analogy between each other. So it's just have some similarity. Let me show. So this is our perforated chip that is coming from the our deprived uh, vendor after dicing. Um, so first, it will go through a coupler, like a, like a in the in the in our chip. Now we are using the Vigu uh, with the edge coupling uh, as an optical interface on the die. And this is similar to the, the cover pillar on the die. And then we put a FAU, we call the a fiber array unit. We put a, the a FAU in the, in the V-group, try to finish the coupling. So FAU can re, uh, serve as the uh, stress buffer and also can be the optical interconnect that, uh, from the shape to the outside world. So this is similar to a substrate on, uh, on, for the electrical uh, interconnect. And eventually, uh, so currently we are using the MPO to come uh, to transfer the data to the outside world. So this is also similar to a uh, to a socket that uh, that is uh, adop adopting the uh, uh, the substrate, the, the whole package in in the motherboard. So uh, this page shows um, uh, the second level uh, optical interface. So what I call second level, this is uh, if you go back. I call the interface between the FAU to the MPU as a second level. Um, the, 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 the coupler 
to the to the FAU as a first level interconnect. Um, so the second level optical interface, normally uh, those are the, all the popular uh, interface uh, in the industry now. So we have IFC connectors, RC, uh, MPO, or uh, somebody called MTP, and also have the the M MT ferros, and also with the MC, uh, IC. So if you see on this figure, so so most of the the solution now is a single channel. So only the MPO and uh, and MT ferro are the multi channels. But those are designed for the <coughs> midboard uh, communications for over long distance. So, so currently we don't have a, a good standard just for the for the package level optical interface. So, so we are trying to uh, push for a new standard for the second level optical interface for the optical IO shape. So that requires first requires the multi channels. It's larger than twelve channels. Um, I think currently the MPO can support up to 24 channels, but uh, in the uh, for the package level uh, optical interface, I think we may require uh, much more than that. Uh, and also it need to be very compact so that can fit into the package. And this should be pluggable and has very uh, low loss and uh, low, vari low variations uh, for repeat mating. And also requires low reflectance. Um, and uh, one important factor is that it needs to uh, survive the solder flow uh, temperature uh, around the 260 C. So because, uh, I mean, if you want to surface mount all, the whole module on the mount board, that needs to, need to survive the solder flow. And also need, I need to be resistant to the damage and scratch and also easy to reclaim. Um, so this is about the second interface. And uh, so now let's talk about the, the optical fibers. So this is the, the fibers is the standard in the communicate, communication industry. So this is the structure for a, a typical optical, IO, uh, optical fiber. So it has the fiber core um, with the clidings. So these two are the, the functional components in a fiber. So all the outside is coating the buffers and the jacket, all, all the protections. So uh, by uh, category, it has the single mode fiber, also has the multi mode fiber. I mean, it's just uh, how many modes the, the fiber can get. So, so for the optical IO triplet, we typically require the, the, the single mode fiber. And sometimes the PM is called the polarization maintaining fiber is required for certain devices. So I will talk about more about the polarization maintaining fiber in the next page. Yeah. So, um, and also it requires O-band uh, 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 wavelengths. Uh, and sometimes it requires a smaller colliding diameter just to uh, give the, the, the pitch uh, more dense densities on, on the fiber pitch, fiber cut, fiber cut. It needs to be low cost and, uh, and the coating needs to be solder reflow compatible. Um, so this uh, page shows uh, more about uh, polarization between the fiber. So I will quickly go through this. So this, we have different uh, uh, flavors. The, the most popular is the panda. So we have a stretch rod and a, have, have a core. It used the, the birefringence to guide the polarization. So make sure the polarization doesn't change over the propagation of the light in the, in the fiber. So those are the key uh, optical characteristics. So, so I, I think I won't go th uh, into the details uh, due to the time lim limitation. And now I will talk about the first level optical interface. So I, I put the three major examples. Um, uh, so, so the first one, I think this is not exhaustive. So there's, there's also other technology I put here, uh, but the, I just put it in popular, popular one. So we have a gradient coupler. So this is page shows the picture shows a gradient coupler, edge coupling, and also the V-glue. So V-glue is a, a kind of a, a, a variation of the edge coupling. But it's a, it's a passive. So, <clears throat> so overall, that uh, the grating coupler and the V group can uh, be very uh, I, I actually grating coupler can be very high scalable because it's two D. But uh, edge coupling and the V group is because just escape the light from one direction, uh, like one D is uh, is low scalability. But the, what V group can help is the uh, the fiber touch run rate. So this is passive. This is very scalable process for the high volume production. 
So, so when we first start the, the optical IO chiplet, uh, we group should be technology to go. So this can give the, the, the chiplet to the, to the HVM. Uh, but uh, in the future, I think we will still look at the different uh, um, coupling technologies in the futures. Um, and this page shows about the optical adhesives. That is, this is the key uh, components that in the uh, in the overall assembly. So I just quickly go through the requirement. <clears throat> um, it will requires a high transparency for the wavelength that is interested. And also it has a very uh, special requirement, the reflect index. It will either need to match with oxide or has special requirement based on wave, wave guide design. And uh, <clears throat> we normally need a UV cure. That is to need required to snap cure the, the components before the thermal cure. And also viscosity is, <clears throat> is an important uh, parameter because uh, we need to have a, a, a good uh, dispense and also the flow control. And the current shrinkage, we prefer that to be less. And the CTE, we, we need that to be matched with the surrounding components. And the modulus, <coughs> that also special requirement depends on the application. And uh, we, we prefer the, the, we need the less moisture absorptions. And also the adhesive need to survive the solid flow and uh, also the reliability types, such as the damp heat and thermocycling. And, and this is a uh, talk more about, more about the optical assembly tool. So normally it requires the optical source that is needed for the uh, active alignment and uh, also optical parameter that receive, receive, receive the signal and uh, try to talk with the stage, how to move the, move the stage to the, to the maximum power it can receive. And it requires the in-situ adhesive dispenser. And also with the out vision cameras to, 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 to do the, to the, to put the, do the alignment. And also the alignment engine, that's the key for, for the tool. So normally it's a six axis with a very precise control, like nanometer resolutions is sometimes is needed. And also need the in-situ UV cure height and the with the base. And uh, with the control stations to control all the components together, and now also, also with the different sensors like the the pressure sensors, well, uh, and also the, the 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 light sensors to try to just try to uh, guide the 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 optical engineering how to do the alignment, and also the uh, at the bottom is uh, uh, automation software that it need to enable need to be enabled for the for the high throughput uh, uh, machine. So normally. The requirement is that we need a high accuracy, high precision tool, and with a high throughput. Um, that is uh, also need a high integration between the alignment engine and the sensors. And they also require easy to operate and debug so the operator can, can, can run the machine and uh, also require the, the low cost and low maintenance, no maintenance and the more reliable machine. So that is, um, so, so now it's a, a, just a summary. So the, the, as a summary, the high bandwidth, high energy efficiency, and low latency impact optical IO chiplet is required for the future uh, high performance computing uh, requirement. And the ecosystem, as I required, uh, as, uh, as presented, for the optical assembly uh, need to be developed. And a better standard for the second level optical interface for the uh, signal photonic chiplet is needed. Uh, optical fiber requirement for the uh, signal photonics chiplet was reviewed, and the re re we call for the low cost single mode fiber and the polarization maintaining fibers. Um, and also at the end, uh, high throughput, uh, scalable uh, first level optical interface assembly process is requir required for the signal photonics chiplet, chiplet to go uh, high volume production. And the Vigor technology is currently is the industry, industry preference uh, at this time. So that can conclude my, my presentation. Yeah, thank you all for your attention. I think we have a, a few questions maybe I can try. Thank you, Chong. Yeah, there are. Let me, um, uh, the first three questions are very similar uh, that they all have to do with the size of the device. What's the height of the device from the substrate? How big is the laminate? Um, and uh, what's what's the IO chiplet size and any limitations on it? 
Yeah, it's really depending. I mean, what how how large the digital? I mean, how fast you want to transfer, right? So if you need more digital, the chip size will grow. But currently, we can we can control that a, a few millimeters, less than ten millimeters, definitely. So this is a, a moderate chip size, and uh, in the future, we we want to keep this uh, the same for, for, for factor in the future. A modular chip size means it can and it can be larger if we need. What what's typical size today? Typical like, a few millimeters, eight to nine millimeters. Uh, okay. In, yeah. And um, there are a couple of questions um, on the actual, I guess, way that that you use this component. You're soldering down uh, the uh, chiplet on the substrate. And the uh, question is whether uh, that is the only way to do it. What about the people who are doing co-packaged sockets and pluggable units? Is there a trade-off there that, that you might comment on the value of yours and worried about using solder um, as mechanism and reflow? That kind of things. Yeah, I think uh, the 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 good thing about our chip is that uh, we can directly package that without the socket, with, without the PC board be, be, below that. That can significantly improve the energy efficiency that uh, the 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 optical chip chiplet can handle. So definitely, if we, we want, we I mean we can put the socket to make it replaceable, but that is uh, hurting the the energy efficiency. So the the best way to use our chiplet is uh, just direct flip chiplet on the on the package okay what about thermal um you know you're putting the electrical along with the the photonic device certainly there's a thermal signature a thermal conduct conduction there and obviously you're going to need to cool this somehow what's what's the answer there yeah so so the thermal of our chip is uh, kind of negligible compared with the if we are sitting in the same same uh, isoc package like cpu usually is a uh, tens of watts or uh, hundreds of watts so our our we are I mean our power is in the same single digit. Right? So so this is a, a like a, not a very significant. So if we have a good solution, heat solution for the CPU, that we can just leverage to to cooling our chip. So that is not not a not a problem for our chip. It looks like we didn't fully satisfy the questions about size. What's the height of the optical component? Is it similar to a normal seven fifty millimeter uh, micrometer height yeah. or? So, so currently we don't require the thinning the die, so we are using the full thickness. But if uh, the height requirement is, is needed, we can also uh, consider thinning our die. Along those lines, you mentioned this, the alignment, uh, the, the the dots. What type of alignment accuracy is needed for the fibers? So actually, for the vigor, I mean, the, the, the beauty for the vigor is can enable passive alignment. And that can much relax the, the tolerance around tens of microns, like 20 microns, that, that can be achievable. So you, when you push, you, you, when you just roughly put the fiber in the, in the in near the vigor region, when you press it down, it can self-align. So, but in the reality, if you don't do that, if you want to do active alignment, that normally requires the some micron or one micron accuracy that, that is needed. Thank you. I thank our sponsors, including Adventist, who's received the highest industry scores in terms of customer satisfaction survey from Test Insight, ranking as the number one large supplier of chip making equipment. And I also wanna thank Omcor and Cadence for sponsoring this event and their sponsorship has enabled us to make these events free. So when you have an opportunity, please thank them for sponsoring MEPTEC. And once again, I want to thank all of you for joining us, and I look forward to seeing everyone tomorrow. Thank you.